Hey guys, today we're going to be doing something different. In the past, we've been exploring stuff around in our operating system, in my main system, or in the system I have on my Mac. But today we're going to jump out of the system and see what I am running under the hood, which is Proxmox. And today we're going to be exploring how to install a system. In other words, how did I get those systems on Proxmox? You can see that I've got Windows 7 right here, but today we are not going to be doing Windows 7. We are going to be doing Windows 11. And we are going to see how Proxmox makes that Windows 11 installation easier by a lot. So without further delay, let's jump in straight into Create VM. Now, prior to this, I've imported all our necessary ISOs into the ISO catalog, so to say. So we're just going to jump in. If you didn't import the ISOs, you just drag your ISOs from your desktop and upload it to your Proxbox server. And that's pretty much it. So for our new system, we're going to name it 205 for name. You can see Windows 7, I use W7, so W11. Let's take the advanced check mark. For CD DVD ISO, that's the ISO I was talking about. I'm gonna use the original ISO without loading it onto an installation USB, which is an extra step that I don't want to take. So with Proxmox, I can just do this and then configure my TPM later because I'm creating it all in a virtual system instead of on bare metal. Okay, so I'm going to choose Microsoft Windows and you can see all the Windows selections over here. I'm installing 11 or Windows Server 2022, which I'm not doing, but they're in the same category. And here you can see an option to add additional drive for vert IO drivers. That's a layer of drivers that allows the operating system to talk to Proxmox and configure everything from display to storage to all the fancy Proxmox things. So that ISO is also stored in my local storage. Um, we're going to use the 240 ISO. That's the newest one as of the recording date and that's all for this page next for system we are going to choose Q35 that's the newer standard the i440fx is kind of dated so we're not going to do that graphics card we are just going to leave it as default I don't have a specific card that I want to allocate to the OS yet so I'm not going to choose that um, for BIOS UEFI, of course. See BIOS, well, that's kind of dated. But yeah, it's also not the standard for Windows 11 installations. The standard is UEFI, so we're gonna go for that. For EFI disk, we don't really need it, so uncheck. For SCSI controller, since we have the vert IO drivers, we're just gonna select this, the default selection. For QEMU agent, we also have the vert IO driver, so we're gonna check that. And then for TPM, hmm, you guys can see right here. So because we are installing Windows 11 straight from the ISO instead of creating an installation media through Rufus that bypasses the TPM requirement, we have to add a TPM or else the installation will fail because the installer will realize that you don't have a TPM on your system. Well. This is exactly how Proxmox makes it easy because all you need is an ISO and a virtual TPM added to the machine. And there you go, you can install Windows 11. TPM storage, we're gonna store it on boot. And speaking of boot, that's also gonna be my boot of volume. Windows 11 also do have a disk size limitation and RAM limitation but it's not too much of a deal. If you guys want to see the specific limitations and restrictions to installing Windows 11, I'll link those down in the description below. You guys can check it out if you want to but if not, stay with me. 
And according to the Proxmox recommendations for installing Windows 11, I'm just gonna choose my preferred cache configuration for this, it's right back. And discard, yes. I will thread, yes, by default. And since I'm booting off of an SSD, I wanna check SSD emulation. Just leave everything else as default, and then we click next. All right. So here we come to the here we come to the page where we assign cores to our virtual machine. So I'm just gonna do six. Okay. And as for Numa, we can make the system Numa aware or not. That doesn't really matter unless you are using specific applications that require this. All right memory we're gonna do a total of eight gigabytes of memory we're not gonna do ballooning because the drivers amazing as they are are still not perfect if you tick this box you can see that it allows for a minimum amount of memory to be allocated to the OS that means if I do a minimum of two gigabytes, two gigabytes will be available to my OS 100% of the time. And at maximum, my OS can request to have eight gigabytes of memory. So that's basically ballooning, but we don't need it here since I have enough memory to sustain eight gigabytes at all times. So I'm not gonna take ballooning. All right, and then next, for networking device, I'm just going to choose my LAN for my PFSense system, the router box or the firewall that I have on my prox box. And we're just going to leave everything as default because we had the vert IO drivers. We don't need anything else from this list. If you don't have the vert IO drivers, the Intel E1000 may be the best compatibility option, but since we have those drivers, vert IO it is. Okay, onwards. Here you have the option to start after created. So we're just gonna take that. And then we're gonna click finish. Okay. It's currently configuring machine 205. And after configuration, ah, it booted. I didn't catch the BIOS. So I'm just gonna reset. Here I'm actually gonna tweak some display settings. And there we go, 1440p reported to the OS or rather the installer. The setup process is really kind of similar to what we've done in the past on the channel. It's just a regular old Windows installation. The process is essentially the same whether you are on bare metal or in a virtual machine. So take all the boxes, agree to the agreement and do a custom installation. Now here is the difference between Proxmox and regular machines. So because we've got that vert IO drivers loaded up and we've selected our storage to be vert IO SCSI if you remember, we need to choose the vert IO drivers for SCSI storage for the machine to pick up that we are using this storage. So I'm just going to click OK and it's going to load the applicable drivers for me but because in the future i'm potentially gonna add more proxmox features or hardware onto this virtual machine i'm gonna select all the driver it has and load it onto my system okay now that the loading process is finished you guys can see that i have my drive here because the storage driver is configured now and i am able to hit next There we go, we've gotten to the graphical installer. So let me get rid of this. And let's select all the options that's in the graphical installer. Proceed with the installation. Skip this. And of course, it's asking us to connect to network. And here is where the vert IO drivers for the internet comes in. 
Because we are not yet in the operating system, we actually need a legacy or compatible Ethernet connection. So I'm going to go up here and add. And here's another advantage of using Proxmox to install your system. When you realize that your hardware isn't enough for the installation, you can always just add a thing to your hardware list. So I'm just going to add again my LAM for PFSense to the virtual machine. OK, and now we are connected. The LAM for PFSense. PFSense didn't recognize this box and just didn't assign it an IP address. So yeah, that aside, but now we are connected. And after naming the system, it restarted again for us to set up the last step in our installation. So I'm going to set it up for personal use and sign in with my Microsoft account. Now here's a disadvantage to installing Windows 11 this way. You have to connect it to a Microsoft account because you are using the standard installation ISO. Here it's asking us whether we want to restore the settings from the previous Windows 11 PC using this Microsoft account. I'm not going to restore for, uh, from anything so I'm just going to click more options, set up as new PC. And there we go. Now it's time to create a pin. And here we need to configure some privacy settings. I'm just going to leave these as default and accept. From here on, there's going to be several more optional prompts. Just configure them if you'd like, or skip them entirely. The ISO I'm using is from a couple releases ago, but I'm going to skip the update here for the sake of your time. There we go, we have our desktop. I'm just gonna log in with the pin that I just created. And here we go, we are right in the Windows out of box experience that will come with a new PC every time. All right, we've come to our desktop. So, well, what can I say? It is a new operating system, all right. We can see the Vert IO drive that I plugged in a moment ago when we were configuring the OS. And the CD drive that we plugged in for the Windows 11 22H2 setup. Here we are just gonna install the Vert IO guest tools. That's the QEMU guest tools that you guys saw earlier that you guys saw me ticking earlier on the setup page with the agent installed we now have completed the windows 11 installation on proxmox in its entirety now let's hear a word from today's sponsor vidnas their highly intuitive web interface makes creating videos easy by combining a typical video editing experience with generative ai voices and realistic avatars to create a video simply upload any media files that you wish to add to the project Add some design elements, avatars, and backgrounds of your choosing. Write a script or upload your voice for the AI avatar to read out. And click Generate. And what's even better, their tool is free to use for up to 3 minutes of video per day. In celebration of the holiday season, Vidnaz is running its annual sale of 50% off everything, with premium plans starting at $10 per month. Bring your creative ideas to life today using the link down in the description below. That effectively concludes today's video. Upon this holiday season, we, the whole team here at Footprint Technologies, want to wish you a Merry Christmas and the most enjoyable holidays. Please accept our most sincere gratitude for all your support in the past year. You are the reason we are here doing what we do, and we hope to continue this collaborative journey for the years and decades to come. 
If you found this video helpful, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and like the video for more content like this in the future. Please also consider sending a super thanks to support the channel as we strive to improve our processes. Super thanks members over a certain donation threshold will be shouted out at the end of every video as appreciation for your generous contribution. Thanks for watching and thanks to Vidnaz for sponsoring this video. See you in the next one.